And welcome back to another series in our Network Basics class. In this lesson, we will discuss Ethernet and Ethernet addressing. We will review our learning objectives, why we need it. We will do some exercises, learning verification, and at the end of this lesson, we will summarize our learning objective. On to our learning objectives. This is quite a lot, but um, hopefully you can uh, stick along. At the end of this course, you should be able to understand if the Ethernet was designed for priority, security, error control, or hostile users, was the Ethernet designed for simplicity, low cost, fairness, addressing, flexibility, ETC, and what is an octet? What are the two types of Ethernet addresses? What kind of Ethernet address has all 48 bits as one? And how can the least significant bit of the first octet signify the type of Ethernet address? And what is the purpose of the next to the least significant bit in the first octet of an Ethernet address? What is the transmission order of Ethernet address? Where did layer 2 QoS come from? And finally, what Windows commands can be used to verify MAC address to IP address mapping. This is a lot and we hope you stick along. Let's get started. Why do we need Ethernet and Ethernet addressing? Okay, uh, the main reason we need Ethernet, Ethernet is actually the dominant communication infrastructure of today. And on Ethernet networks, you use Ethernet addresses. So, in order to better understand network addressing, it would help to be able to understand Ethernet addressing. So, we have about 11 exercises in this course. Exercise 1 of 11, what is Ethernet and what Ethernet does not do? Okay, so the question is, what measures does Ethernet put into place to address priority, security, error control, or hostile users? The answer is uh, nothing. So those will actually have to be handled by another protocol or mechanism. Okay, in exercise 2 of 11, we want you to determine, is Ethernet fair? Well, Ethernet is fair if you believe that it's fair that everyone has an equal opportunity to disrupt the network. <laughs> and uh, in exercise 3 of 11, we're going to look into Ethernet address representation. We're going to review how long an Ethernet address is in bits and how long is an Ethernet address in human readable form. Remember hexadecimal? Yes. So answer is revealed next. So yes, an Ethernet address is 48 bits long. Uh, in a human readable form, it'll be 12 hexadecimal digits. Alrighty, if you are confused about hexadecimal, please review our previous uh, video. Now, exercise 4 of 11. In this exercise, we're looking at Ethernet address types. You know, what are the two types of Ethernet addresses, and what are the subtypes of multi multicast addresses, and what Ethernet address has all been set to one? Answer is revealed next. Yes, so uh, the two types of Ethernet addresses are physical and multicast. Multicast applies to more than uh, one or more systems, while physical addresses apply to a single system. Now, there are some subtypes of multicast addresses. There's the broadcast multicast address, which means all stations on an Ethernet, whereas the group type of multicast address refers to a group of systems. Now, the broadcast address is the Ethernet address that has all bits set to one. All righty. So now to exercise five of 11, octet. How many bits are 
in an octet? Well, the clue is in, in the name, actually, because there are eight bits in an octet. Alrighty, simple enough. In exercise 6 of 11, we're going to review the list significant bit. What is the purpose? And how can the list significant bit be located? And why is it called the list significant bit? Let's look into that. Okay, so when dealing with an Ethernet address, the, when you look in the first octet of that address, uh, the least significant bit actually tells you what type of Ethernet address it is. Uh, you can locate it because within an octet, the least significant bit will be the one that's furthest to the right. Uh, and it's actually called least significant bit because it has the least value. Thus, it is least significant. Simple enough. In exercise 7 of 11, we're going to look into the next two list significant bit. What is the purpose and where can this be found? Answer is revealed next. Okay, in this case, the purpose of this bit actually is to uh, let you know if the address is globally or locally administered. In this case, global means the address is actually assigned to a manufacturer and local means you can just specify locally yourself. Now, where is it found? So, it's actually found immediately to the left of the least significant bit. Alrighty, in exercise 8 of 11, we're going to understand the transmission order of Ethernet addresses. What is transmission order of Ethernet address? So, actual transmission order of Ethernet addresses is actually octet by octet from left to right with each octet transmitted in reverse order. So, actually what that means is the least significant bit of the first octet will go first. Um, so, the reason for this is now you can actually pick up what type of address it is based on the order in which the bits come through. Alrighty, exercise 9 of 11, we're going to verify Ethernet address and we are going to run uh, the window command ARP-A or ARP-A and we're going to also understand how we can locate the gateway address, the broadcast address, the multicast address, and the Ethernet address in. So, answer is revealed next. Okay. In this case, we have a Windows computer here, representing the command prompt, showing the ARP-A command. Uh, you see that first line label interface, that's actually the address of the actual interface itself. Here in this example, you see that 172.16.0.1, that's the actual gateway's IP address there in this example. If you look at the very bottom, you'll see that 255.255.255.255, and that corresponding all Fs physical address that corresponds to a broadcast. Now if you look above that you will see several entries that look like 01005 uh, echo. Those are actually multicast physical addresses. Now to exercise 10 of 11 list significant bit in gateway address. We're going to run the same command in Windows uh, ARP dash A, and uh, we're going to convert to the first octet of the gateway address to binary. Then we were going. We're, then we're, what we're going to do is we're going to locate the list significant bit of the first octet, and then we're going to correlate, compare the list significant bit to the type of address, Ethernet address. Answer is revealed next. Okay, in this case, uh, we have the a subset of the ARP dash A output. And here we have the, the internet address of our uh, gateway. We have here this physical address corresponding to our gateway here. Now we have this, this D4 in hexadecimal, which we're going to convert into binary first. We use our chart over here. We see the D corresponds to 1101. The 4 corresponds to 0100. And since we converted this to binary, now we can locate the least significant bit, which will be the one furthest to the right, which is a zero. And because it is a zero, then we know it is a physical address. All right, and that's that simple enough. Um, you could pause, rewind, if you want to uh, 
if you're not clear, um, hopefully it is. So to our last exercise, 11 of 11, the least significant bit in the multicast. So we're going to run the same command, ARP hyphen A, and then we're going to uh, convert the multicast Ethernet address to binary, and then we're going to locate the least significant bit of the first octet. Again, we're going to correlate, compare the least significant bit to the type of Ethernet address. So, yeah, and if you want to follow along and do this on your computer, sure. Uh, answer is revealed on the next slide. Okay, in this case, I chose one of the multicast addresses on this system. As we see here, the physical address here, 01005 echo and so on. This first octet, 01 here, we take this hexadecimal converted to binary. Hexadecimal and binary. We use this chart over here. The 0 is 0000, as shown here. The 1 is 0001, as shown here. Note we say octet because this is actually a group of 8 bits once it's converted to binary. The least significant bit is the one furthest to the right. In this case, it's a 1. And because it is a 1, we know for sure it is a multicast address. All righty, simple enough. Um, now we have reached the end of our exercise. I know, guys, it, it was kind of lengthy, uh, but hopefully you followed up along with us. Let's go ahead and look into our learning objective verification. At the end of this lesson, you should have been able to answer this question. Was the Ethernet designed for priority, security, error control of hostile users? Was the Ethernet designed for simplicity, low cost, fairness, addressing, flexibility, ETC? What is an octet? What are the two types of Ethernet addresses? What kind of Ethernet address has all 48 bits as one? How can the least significant bit of the first octet signify the type of Ethernet address. And finally, a couple of more. What, what is the purpose of the next two list significant bit in the first octet of the Ethernet address? What is the transmission order of Ethernet addresses? And where did layer 2 QoS come from? And what Windows command can be used to verify MAC address to IP address mapping? If you're still, if you, if, if you, hopefully you're able to answer all of this. But if not, we're going to summarize this shortly. And here is a summary of this lesson. Ethernet was not designed for priority, security, error control, or hostile user. Ethernet was designed for simplicity, low cost, low cost, fairness, and addressing flexibility. An octet is a group of eight bits. The two types of Ethernet addresses are physical, identifies a particular system, and multicast identifies one or more systems. A broadcast address on Ethernet has all 48 bits set. To one. Remember the FFFF ones we saw? Yeah, that's a broadcast address. Now, the least significant bit of the first octet signifies the address is a physical address or a multicast address. One equal multicast. If this will help you think about it as multicast address, one or more systems. The transmission order of Ethernet address is octet by octet from left to right, with each octet transmitted in reverse order. Thus, the least significant bit of each octet goes first. This provides an advantage to the switching hardware, as by picking up the first bit, the device knows if the frame is ultimately goes to either a single host, or this must go to multiple systems. Finally, the purpose of the next two list significant bit is to signify if the address is globally or locally administered. Again, the global administered addresses are assigned by manufacturers. In this case, zero equals global 
and 1 equals local. Windows command harp dash a can be used to verify the MAC address to IP address mapping. ARP will be covered more uh, later in this class. And this concludes our lesson. Thank you.